Jesus, a Christmas series. So let's give her a big round of applause. Fantastic. How good is it to be in God's house, eh? I have a question. I'm curious. Who actually likes mince pies? Put your hand up. Oh, wow, quite a few. Okay, we're outnumbered, Jacob. <laughs> we will be having mince pies on Christmas Eve then. Let's do it. Praise God. How good were the carols? Thank you so much to the team. That was incredible. Um, and how good is Jesus? Who loves Jesus? Jesus is awesome. We've been doing a series here at Everyday Church titled Simply Jesus. And we kicked off last week and we spoke about how we can position ourselves for the miracles that God is wanting to do in our lives right now. Who knows that God is alive and living today? He's alive and living today. And we talked about knowing deep down at our core that no word from God will ever fail. No word from God will ever fail, despite what our circumstances tell us, despite the obstacles we face. And we all face obstacles, don't we? We all face obstacles, despite what other people are saying to us. No word from God will ever fail. And you know what? When we know that deep down at our core, when we know that deep down at our core, we are able to say, like Mary said, when the angel appeared to her, we are able to say, I am the Lord's servant. May your word be, be, may your word to me be fulfilled and you can come into agreement with the will of God for your life. And we looked at three points, didn't we? If you're here, if you remember them, I'm not even sure if I remember them. They were be humble, be humble, fear him. Pastor Chin's going to say them after I say them. <laughs> be humble, fear him and stay hungry. Amen. And not just for salt and vinegar chips and chocolate. Stay hungry for the things of God. That means stay hungry for his presence, for being in prayer, for being in church, for being in the word of God. And so if you missed that message, I really encourage you to jump online. We have a web website. We have a YouTube account. We have a Facebook account. We're even on TikTok. Don't throw stones at me, but we are on TikTok. We utilise the things of the world to get the word of God out there. Amen. We'll even use Santa. Praise God. Next week, we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. How awesome is that? Everybody loves baby Jesus. We love celebrating babies, don't we? We hold baby showers. We count down the days. Uh, and, um, you know, we just love babies. You know, they're cute, they're cuddly, um, all of that. But you know what happened at Christmas time is so much more than a baby. So much more than a baby. Side note, I just remember when I had my babies, you'd open up the door. Mums, you can relate. You'd open up the door and you'd be so happy to see an adult and they'd look straight past you to the baby. <laughs> it's like, hello, I'm here. And, uh, but anyway, I'm sure Daisy can relate and uh, Mariella, but praise God. But, you know, Christmas time is so much more so much more than a baby. You know, I lived a life of hopelessness for so many years, addicted to drugs and alcohol, couldn't see a future, couldn't find a way out. It just felt like this big black hole that I couldn't get out of, surrounded by darkness, no hope of ever moving forward, no hope of things getting better, uh, no hope of ever living the life that I thought I could live. You know, you have these dreams, you think you're going to live a certain life and I thought that's never going to happen. There's no way it can happen. I felt so bound, so heavy and it felt like I was carrying the weight of the world upon my shoulders. And you know, so many people are living their lives like that today with no hope, surrounded by darkness, not knowing which way is up. You know, which way is up? And for some of us, if we have any hope, it's wavering. We're doubting. We're, we're struggling. We're not, so sure in, we're not so sure anymore. You know, with increasing financial pressures, relationship issues, marriage problems, identity confusion, things not turning out as we had hoped. You know, we prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and it didn't happen. And our hope is fading it's wavering. We can't seem to see a way forward for our situation. And we feel like we're carrying the weight of the world upon our shoulders. But do you know it was never meant to be that way? Christmas is a time when all that changed. All of it changed at Christmas time. Jesus Christ was so much more than a baby. 
And we read about it in the book of Isaiah in chapter 9. We find a great prophecy of the coming birth of Jesus Christ. And it's in verse 2 to verse 4, and we read this. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Verse 6, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. You know, these people were far from God. They were separated by sin, and they were walking in a time of darkness. They couldn't see a way out. They couldn't see a way forward. They didn't know which way was up, but they saw a great light. And that great light was Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was hope. It was Jesus Christ himself that said in John chapter 8, verse 12, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. You know, to never walk in darkness actually means then that there's always hope. There is always hope. And not just any hope, but a living hope. 1 Peter 1, 3 to 4 says this, Praise be Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. And so this new birth is a spiritual birth. So you've got your natural birth and you've got your spiritual birth. And our spiritual birth is one that you can in, in, that you can enter into simply through believing in the Son of God. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And when you enter into this new relationship, you have access to this living hope, this new birth. It's a spiritual birth. You have your natural birth and you have your spiritual birth. And you ha if you haven't had a spiritual birth before, we, we can have an opportunity at the end of this message and you can have an opportunity to step into a new relationship with Jesus Christ. But this hope, hope means, is what hope means is to have a confident expectation. We throw the word hope around fairly casually this, these days, but hope in the Bible actually means to have a confident expectation, to know deep down at the core of who you are that despite your circumstances that no word from God will ever fail. And so that means that there's always hope. There's hope for you. There's hope for your situation. There's hope for your family. There's hope for whatever it is that you're going through. Even when it doesn't look like it, there is hope. And you have to know that this morning. You have to know this morning, whatever circumstance you're facing, that there is hope. There is hope. Jesus Christ came at Christmas time as a baby. He was hope fulfilled. There is hope for your situation. Whoever's telling themselves right now, there's, there, maybe there is, but not for my situation. I'm telling you, this is truth. There is hope for your situation. That, that's a lie that you're believing right now. There is hope for your situation. There is hope. And it gets better than that. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 4, and this is speaking of Jesus, it says this, You have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. The weight that you may be carrying on your shoulders is not yours to carry. It is not yours to carry. Jesus came to shatter that yoke. That bar across your shoulders, that weight has been broken. That is good news this morning. That weight that you have been carrying is not yours to carry. When Jesus came at Christmas time, he came to set you free. 
He came to release you. He came to unburden you. It is not ours to carry that weight that we walk around with. It is yours no longer. And it's all part of God's great plan. Imagine walking around a bit freer on the shoulders. It was Jesus Christ himself that said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30, listen to this, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Jesus said it. If you don't believe me, believe him. He just said it. His yoke is easy, and his burden is light. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. God is a gentle God. God is a gentle God. He is a humble God. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. It was never his plan for you to carry the weight of the world upon your shoulders. And sometimes it gets heavier at Christmas time, right? You've got to get the turkey, you've got to get the ham, you've got to buy the presents, you've got to put the tree up, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, you've got to go to this party, that party, and the next party. Oh. And what are we doing? We're celebrating Jesus who came to break the bar across our shoulders. It was never ours to carry. Jesus came that we might have life and life in abundance. He came to this earth to take our burdens, to take our issues, to take those things that we are struggling with to help us through our grief. That is why he came to this earth. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 says this, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. His shoulders. That wasn't your shoulders, that was his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace peace. He took everything upon his shoulders so we wouldn't have to. He took every burden so we wouldn't have to carry every burden. Do you believe it this morning? Do you believe it? It's hard to believe sometimes. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27 says this, in the day the Lord in that day, the Lord will end the bondage of his people. He will break the yoke of slavery. You know, we're all a slave to something and you get to choose. You're a slave to sin or you're a slave to righteousness. I know what I choose. Let's finish the scripture. He will break the yoke of slavery and lift it from their shoulders. You know, sometimes I think we carry the weight of the world upon our shoulders when we think everything depends on us. You know, and I say this respectfully, but sometimes, you know, we're so independent and perhaps full of pride when we think everything depends on us. I say it respectfully and I can say it because sometimes I think the same way. When in fact God calls us to be interdependent, which is dependent on him and dependent on each other. That's why he puts us in a family we're dependent on him and we're dependent on each other. That's how he created the world to be. And then we can get rid of sayings like, I, don't, I just have to do everything by myself. I don't trust anyone. I don't have anyone. I'm all I've got. If I don't do it, who else is going to? No, we can get rid of those sayings. God created us for relationship. And you don't got no one because you got Jesus and it starts with him. And then when you start with him and then he begins to add to your life and you're just like, okay, God, no more. <laughs> There's always more. Yeah. We were created to be in relationship with him and with others. That's why he was so devastated. He was so devastated with Adam and Eve's sin in the Garden of Eden. He was so devastated, separating humanity for eternity. And from that point on, we're all born separated from God. 
from that point on. And the only way back, the only way back for us was for him to be separated from his son. That was the only way back. And Jesus came to this earth as a baby, grew into a man, was insulted, whipped, spat upon, and then he died a horrific death. Why? To bring us back into relationship with our Heavenly Father. That's how much he cares about relationship. Christmas time is so much more than a baby, though we love babies. The Bible says Jesus is our wonderful counsellor. The word wonderful, we use it so commonly these days, but it means something out of the ordinary, something that's too hard to understand, beyond our comprehension. You know, sometimes intellect gets in the way of people believing in God. They try and figure everything out and they talk themselves out of God. Yes, out of the miracle, the Christmas miracle. Wonderful counsellor, that means Jesus can bring clarity to your situation, wisdom when we don't know what to do, when we don't understand. He takes the weight off having to figure it all out. He takes that weight off. He has the answer because he is the wonderful counsellor. His ways are better, his ways are higher. And do you know what? Sometimes maybe we'll never understand. Sometimes maybe we will never understand and we have to be okay with that because God is God and we are but a breath on this earth. Who are we? Who are we but a breath on this earth? God is our wonderful counsellor. Jesus is our mighty God. Mighty means powerful, warrior, champion, Chief, giant, strong, valiant, hero. This is the Jesus that we're talking about. So much more than a baby. The defender, the rescuer, a hero, a soldier. This is who carries our weight upon his shoulders. Who better to carry the weight than a soldier? So much more than a baby. Isaiah chapter 45, 2 says, I will go before you and will level the mountains. He goes before you and makes your path straight. I will break down gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron. He's like, um, probably showing my age here, but is it Chuck Norris? <laughs> Who's a hero these days? Give me one, guys. No, give me one. Come on. Thor, there we go. He's like, Thor, this is who we're talking about. Not just baby Jesus, Thor and Chuck Norris. That's, that's, my, that's, that's my, um, my mum's generation, I think. But anyway. But you've got to get that picture. This is, this, is, this is who's got you. He's got your back. He has got your back. What a champion. Psalm 42 says, he lifted me out of the slimy pit. You ever been in a slimy pit? I don't mean an actual slimy pit, but in your life. You ever just, just it's just yuck? Out of the mud and the myrrh. I don't even know what myrrh is or mire. Mire. Everyone knows I can't speak here. I don't know why they get me to preach. <laughs> I actually finished year 12. Jacob didn't. <laughs> I think the last e pass was year eight. <laughs> if you get to know us, you'll know our background. But anyway, my, anyway, it's about Jesus. And he set my feet on a rock and he gives me a firm place to stand. He, he brings us to safety. He brings us, he delivers us from every situation. He delivered us. He can set you free from your circumstance, that addiction, that relationship you've entangled yourself within. You know, even our poor choices, sometimes we make really pathetic choices and he still helps us. How good is he? So merciful, so gracious is our God. He is our mighty God. So much more than a baby. This is who we are celebrating at Christmas time. Jesus is our everlasting father. Everlasting is past time, future time and time of continuous existence. He was before and after Revelation 1 8, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. 
Who better to carry the weight of your world than someone who knows the beginning from the end? Think about that for a moment. Who, who better to carry that weight, that burden, that circumstance, that situation that you're dealing with? Who better to carry that than the person that knows the beginning from the end? Yeah. I know who I'm giving my stuff to. He was there before you were born. In fact, he knitted you in your mother's womb. Think about that for a moment. He knitted you in your mother's womb. And you know what? He'll be there waiting for you at the end. He'll be there waiting for you at the end. Our everlasting Father who gives us eternal life. And finally, Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. You know, when we come back into a relationship with our Heavenly Father, we experience a peace like never before. You can't explain it and nobody can take it away. You know, uh, mums and dads, you know, when you're like to your kids, can I just get some peace? You know, where's my peace? Even your kids can't take away this peace. <laughs> they can't. They honestly can't. They cannot take this peace. Philippians 4, 7 says this, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Jesus came to bring us that peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And the team can come. To jump back to my story of being addicted to drugs and alcohol, life a mess, not knowing which way was up, struggling, trying to make sense of the world, searching for peace, searching for joy, searching for something. You know, I was searching for something and I didn't even know what it was. I, I just didn't know. I knew it was something. I knew it was something and I didn't know what it was. Searching in all the wrong places, drugs, alcohol, relationships, you name it. And some people, they do the same thing, but in jobs, in money, in material things, success. You know, it's, it doesn't matter which way. I was at the bottom of the bottom, but you can be at the top of the top and you could still be searching for something. We're all searching for something. And, you know, I couldn't believe it when I found it. And I knew when I'd found it. I just knew. And his name was Jesus. His name was Jesus. And I prayed a simple prayer. And as I prayed that prayer, I remember a peace and a joy come into my heart like never before. And I literally felt the weight come off my shoulders. I felt the weight come off my shoulders. And I remember thinking in that moment that I'm not alone anymore. I'm not alone anymore. I found my wonderful counsellor, my mighty God, my everlasting Father, my Prince of Peace. He lifted me up out of that slimy pit <laughs> and the mire or the mur <laughs> and planted me on a solid ground. Praise God. Someone that gave me purpose, destiny. And do you know what else is very, very important? Eternal life. Eternal life because it's nothing but a breath on this earth. We're just here for a moment. Colossians 1.13 says this, For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. And you know, God wants us all to be in his kingdom. He wants, his, he wants all of his kids to come home. He, it was never his intention for us to be separated from him. He wants us all in his family and he wants us all together, especially at Christmas time. Most definitely, it's like a mama wanting all her family at home at Christmas time. John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth and the life and no one comes to the Father except through me. And Jesus made a way for us to do that. And we can come to him through a simple prayer. And we find it in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to 10. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. And I just want to give anybody an opportunity this morning, if you have not stepped into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and you'd like to, 
I'd like to give you an opportunity this morning. And so just with every head bowed and every eye closed, we're going to pray all together as a church out loud. And if you'd like to be a part of that prayer, just mean it with all your heart. And receive the miracle of Christmas. If you pray after me. God, I thank you that you sent your son Jesus to die on a cross for me. I ask that you forgive my sins. Wash me clean. And today I choose to live for you. I make you my Lord and Saviour. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, if you just want to slip your hand up in the air, just so I can see, I'd love to pray with you. If you are online, joining us online, if you'd like to comment, I'd love to send you some resources. Just one moment longer, if you prayed that prayer for the first time or made a recommitment this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Why don't you stand to your feet? I'm going to pray for every single person here this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Lord, I just thank you for every family. Why don't you lift your hands up? That's it. Thank you, Father God. God, I just thank you for every single person here this morning, every child, every adult, every family represented, Lord God. I just pray, Father, I release blessings, Lord God. We just thank you for your peace that surpasses all understanding, Father God. We just thank you, Lord, for who you are, Lord. We pray for miracles. We pray for healing. We pray for breakthrough, Lord God. I pray that you would meet every need, Lord God, for the heart's cry of your people, Father, that you'd come and touch the hearts of your people, Lord God. You know every single person and you know the prayers that they are praying, Lord God. You know the, the, the their hearts cry, Lord God. I pray that you'd come into those places, Lord God, that you just move in such a powerful way, Lord God. We just thank you for who you are. For those that need comfort, Lord, I pray you'd comfort. For those that need healing, Lord, I pray that you'd bring healing. For those that need a, a financial breakthrough, Father, I pray you'd bring a financial breakthrough, Father God. For those that need uh, uh, just m uh, marriage uh, restoration, reconciliation, just just a work in their marriage that's struggling, I just pray that you'd move in such a powerful way, Father God, that you'd be at the centre, Lord God. I would pray, Father, that they'd just look to you, Lord, that they wouldn't give up, Father God, that you just move. I pray for those that are praying for wayward kids, just just begging you for them to come home. I just pray that you'd bring them home, Lord God. We're asking for a miracle, Lord, that you'd move powerfully, Father God. Have your way, Lord. You're such a good God. Have your way, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your peace and your presence right now, Lord God. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's finish on a song this morning.